Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We call this a non-standard equation because we have an exponential function or expression on the left hand side and a polynomial on the right hand side. To solve this problem obviously you can use guess and check, right? Hopefully you got it by this time, don't say it yet. But I'd like to use Lambert's W function. Okay, let's see how the W goes. So first of all, quick definition about Lambert's W function. It's the inverse function for x times e to the x, such that if your input is x times e to the x, then your output will be x. Or if you input t e to the t, then it'll be t. The reason why I use the t is because a lot of times our equations are given in terms of x, and we have to turn it into something else and then use substitution. So let's go ahead and stick with t now. Now, if you invert this function, you're going to get t times e to the t, which is what we just talked about. But of course, t times e to the t is not 1 to 1, so you kind of have to cut it at negative 1, and then you're going to have two branches, two pieces, so on and so forth. If you want to get the details, you can go ahead and check out the link or just search for Lambert's W function. Okay, let's see how it goes. First of all, to be able to apply it, I do need to get something like this something multiplied by e to the power the same thing makes sense so it's not in that form at all but we can put it in that form by doing a bunch of uh, different manipulations algebraically okay so first of all the base is three we'll take care of that later turn it into e turning it into e is actually fairly easy you can do it first too if you want but i'm going to do it later so first of all, I want to square root both sides because we have to get rid of this. We don't have x squared here, let alone x minus 1 squared. So it will be better if we can linearize this. Okay. If you take the square root of both sides, obviously, you kind of have to take the square root of this. But that's going to give you the absolute value. And that is going to have two values depending on the value of x. So it's either x minus 1 or 1 minus x. But here's the thing. If you set this, and by the way, you can write this as 3 to the power x over 2. You could also write it as square root of 3 to the power x, which is again an exponential function with a base greater than 1. So this is going to be an increasing function. That's important to know. And then if you look at, for example, suppose the square root of 3 to the x equals x minus 1. Let's go ahead and take a quick look graphically, right? This should give us an idea. Obviously, this is an increasing function and this is also increasing, will they intersect? That's the main question. So if you look at the, the exponential one first, it's, it's going to look something like this. doesn't matter, you know, give or take a few. But x minus 1 is going to be a line with slope 1, its y-intercept is negative 1, and of course the x-intercept is 1, so it's going to look like this. To keep a long story short, there is no intersection. Okay? But you could also argue that, hey, x needs to be you know, if x is greater than 1, then this needs to be positive. But if x is greater than 1, this is what happens, so on and so forth. You can go into inequalities too, but I just wanted to show you graphically what that looks like. Therefore, the square root of 3 to the power x must equal this. Make sense? So square root of 3 to the power x equals 1 minus x. Because x minus 1 does not work. Does this work? You'll see. Okay, now I want to write the left-hand side as 3 to the power x over 2 because if you square root it basically you're raising something to the power 1 half in the real world of course that's a different story in complex world and then this is going to be 1 minus x awesome so from this point on we're going to do a bunch of manipulations quite a few to turn it into something that looks like this okay t e to the t let's see how this goes first of all i would like to negate both sides obviously that makes sense right so you can multiply both sides by negative one or you can just write this as the opposite of x minus one and you could probably leave the negative one there i don't care because uh, we rather keep things positive and then we're going to bring the three to the power x over two we can't move x minus one because if we do then it's going to be one over x minus one which is not going to match up with the exponent makes sense so our goal is to always bring it to this form so if we mess with the t then uh, we can't change the exponent that's the problem um, so that means we're going to multiply both sides or divide both sides rather by this 
let's go ahead and do it. I was gonna multiply by the uh, negative exponent, but that's okay, it's the same thing. So we get a one here, and by multiplying both sides by negative one at the same time, we get rid of this negative here, cool. Let's leave the negative on the right, uh, left hand side, which is gonna be now the right hand side because I'm gonna flip sides. Now I can go ahead and write this as three to the power negative x over two, right? times x minus one equals negative one. Easy, okay, great. So we're almost there. Uh, now I wanna get uh, x minus one in the exponent, but I can't get that, but I can get, um, well, here's what I would probably do. Let me go ahead and do this one more time. I probably sh shouldn't multiply by negative anyways in the first place, anyways, that's okay. Multiply by negative one, you're gonna get this. Okay, here we go. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I can't get one minus x, I have a 1 minus x, so the exponent must be something like that. So I can achieve it by multiplying both sides by 3 to the power 1 half. You'll see in a little bit why that works. Now when you multiply both sides by 3 to the power 1 half, these exponents are added. You see that? So when you add them, you're going to get 3 to the power negative x plus 1 or 1 minus x over 2. And there you go. Multiply by 1 minus x, you're almost there. And of course, this is going to be square root of 3, or you want to leave it as, as 3 to the power 1 half, that's fine too. Now, we're almost there. Two more things we need to do. Uh, 3 needs to be changed, and 1 minus x needs to be changed. Because the exponent is 1 minus x over 2, I need to divide both sides by 2, or multiply by 1 half. Let's go ahead and do it. 3 to the power 1 minus x over 2, multiply by 1 minus x over 2, equals 3 to the power 1 half, divide by 2. Make sense? divided both sides by 2 now, and we got the same exponent. Now let's take care of the base. How do you turn 3 into e? Remember, 3 is e to the power ln 3, right? By the definition. So we can replace it with that, e to the power ln 3 to the power 1 minus x over 2, multiply by 1 minus x over 2, which you can call t now if you want, but let's just wait. Divide by 2. Okay, great. Now, this ln3 is going to be multiplied, so it's going to look like this. e to the power 1 minus x divided by 2 times ln3 times 1 minus x over 2 equals that. But what I want to do now is multiply both sides by ln3 so that the exponent and this expression are the same. Make sense? And of course, this means you're going to multiply both sides by ln3. And we got what we needed, right? When you w both sides, you're going to get something nice. But let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side a little bit. I can write this as 3 to the power 1 half times 1 half times ln 3. And now, this is kind of one of the final blows. We're going to bring this as an exponent, bring it back, in other words. And that's going to be 3 to the power 1 half times ln 3 to the power 1 half. You see, those numbers are also the same. But it's an, it has an ln. That's perfectly fine. Don't worry. We'll take care of that in a little bit. So here's what I got so far e to the power 1 minus x over 2 ln 3 multiplied by 1 minus x over 2 ln 3 equals 3 to the power 1 half times ln 3 to the power 1 half. Now, how do you take care of that last piece, right? Okay, so here's, how, here's what you can do about it. You can basically write the 3 to the power 1 half as e to the power ln something. So let's see how that goes. e to the power ln 3 to the power 1 half multiply by ln 3 to the power 1 half. Now notice that these two expressions, oops, I meant to change the color here, apparently. So these two expressions are the same, notice that. So here's what we got. If we apply W on both sides, we can go ahead and call this T, and we can go ahead and call this C, because it's a constant. Then we get E to the T times T equals e to the c times c. And if you w both sides, then you're going to get t equals c, which is a li little easier to handle because, you know, substitution helps out a lot, so we don't have to write the whole thing every time. And then 1 minus x divided by 2 times ln3, which is t, is supposed to equal the constant, which is ln3 to the power 1 half. Okay. Here's the final step, I think, or next to final. We're going to move this 1 half to the front, and we're going to get 1 minus x divided by 2 times ln 3 equals 1 half times ln 3. ln 3 cancels out, 2 cancels out, and you end up with x equals 0. Wow, all this work for x equals 0? Yes. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. 
please let me know. And by the way, I made a graph for you so that you can take a look. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.